That was a fun mod. I liked that mod. Yeah, the Overseer did good work. More mods like that, please. Uh, what, what, what did you say you liked most about it? It was fun and serious enough without being too heavy-handed, but also had a good amount of humor in it. Yeah, didn't have an excessive amount of dialogue. Yeah. It's just good. Overseer yeah, did good work. it was good. It wasn't, it wasn't, you're gonna have to do this thing and sneak in behind enemy lines, but don't lose your humanity! <laughs> also hear Poison all of Freeze's side. And then feel bad about it! Okay, well, there are, he does have a few other mods that we'll eventually get around to, hopefully. Good. That was, that was fun. I enjoyed that. that all was, right. That was, a, that was a fun, enjoyable mod. I thought he did a real, I thought he did a really good job on it, and my only real critique is, um, some of Tully's, uh, dialogue could have been recorded better. Yeah, had a few more greeting barks. Yeah, have a couple more greeting barks, and also it was like the the microphone was kind of not great ah. for some of it. That's and, and that's like that's a little nitpicky thing. It's sure. you know you get you you do with you do what you can with what you got, and yeah. he did a he did a good job on it, and I I enjoyed it. Yeah, well done, well done. It's fun, great mod. So yeah, all right. We don't have to start an entirely new thing today. Bungie devs be like, this is great gameplay. Bungie dads, oh, Bungie devs. Bungie devs, I see. Yeah, Bungie, Bungie developer be like, this is great gameplay. Destiny, right? Yeah. Yeah, Destiny and also Halo. Gotcha. Well, the older Halo games. Y you know, because I know people are gonna, I know people are gonna bring it up and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? But it's like, if you played, if you played Bungie, or if you played Destiny 2, or probably Destiny 1, I don't know, I didn't really play that one nearly, I didn't really play that one very much. But if you played Destiny 2 and any of the raids they have, for some reason, Bungie loves doing these things where it's like, you have to walk across a three pixel wide thing and go through like a maze to get to a thing at the end of the level and it's like this is a shooter i'm not playing mirror's edge stop trying to make me run through a bunch of different stuff and jump from one thing and then slide down to slide 500 feet down a slope and then jump across that slope onto another thing anyone that knows what i'm talking about knows what the fuck i'm talking about okay it's really annoying and i don't understand why they think that's just the most riveting gameplay i don't know maybe they wanted to there's some platforming aficionados on the I, team i don't know i think it's dumb fair enough not everyone's gonna have that and enjoy that yeah i remember being i remember playing destiny 2 and being really excited because like a raid would come out and then i would get into the raid and it would just be like oops all platforming and i'm just i'm like can i just shoot a bunch of robots why, why can't I just be shooting robots? It's the most Let me shoot robots. Cathartic part of the game is shooting robots. Let me shoot robots. Fun stuff, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, it's just dumb things. It's like, I don't want to play a CSGO surf map. I want to shoot robots. Well, yeah. Different people like different things. And that's one of the reasons that I don't play Destiny 2 anymore. Yeah. One of many, 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 many reasons. I see. I have a lot of reasons for not playing Destiny 2 anymore, and yeah, that's one of them. I believe it. Yeah. I have a lot of reasons why I don't play my addiction either. Yeah. Says how much he hates platforming and then tries to do, and then does more platforming. Yeah. Uh, you're not doing any challenging platforming. You're just kind of dicking around. Yeah, I'm just goofing and jumping from fine. one thing to another thing to another thing to another thing. Yeah. Just kind of relax it a bit. Because we kind of didn't have anything else to do today. Yeah, I kind of hoped that there would be a little bit more ah that that's the only other criticism we would have is there's no big finale there doesn't need to be a big finale and because you can do those contracts in basically any order you want i guess it you know maybe we should have saved one of them for the big finale but then that would require us knowing which contract was which one i guess all this stuff with sheridan was a lead up to maybe a a, a later mod maybe just as long as sheridan doesn't like kidnap me and <laughs> kill all my companions and then Take all your armor. And then, yeah, take all my armor and then talk at me for 20 <laughs> minutes and then shoot my hands and then, like, give me permanent stat changes. And then it's like, no one in the Mojave is going to treat you the same way ever again. And then you get back to the Mojave and they all treat you the exact same way because it's not actually part of the main gameplay. Yeah. I, I really liked New Vegas Bounties. I hated the last... No, that's not true. I really like New Vegas Bounties. I just don't like how Bounties 3... Ended. I feel like that's a very common criticism. Yeah. Crocker and Cuddy are funny as shit. Yep. The the missions were good. Yeah. The, it was nice to have a bookend on that whole series, being able to deal with uh, Ruthie or whatever her name was, the, the slaver in Glanton. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw that criticism out there. I you know if you want to if you want your work to be inspired by Blood Meridian, that's totally cool. But give your characters different names. Well, I I'm not familiar with Blood and Meridian, so I can't say. 
Uh, well, there's legitimately a character in Blood Meridian who leads a group, a like a paramilitary group, and his name is Glanton, and they just kill Indians in the book hmm. for scalps. I see. And in the in this, Glanton is the leader of a paramilitary group who kills tribals. Yeah, mods do seem to bounce between being yeah, just a hobby thing that you shouldn't take seriously and something with higher aspirations that would deserve the criticism of high art. I'm, I'm, I, I don't have a problem with you doing that. The problem I have is when you do that and then just wholesale rip off Blood Meridian, which I didn't know at the time because I had never read, read Blood Meridian. Well, maybe he was heavily inspired. Maybe he liked it so much he wanted to make references There's to it. There's a difference between being heavily inspired and having all of your characters have the exact same names. Okay. It would be like if I decided to make a mod of Fallout New Vegas, and I was like, the main character is named Ishmael, and in this mod you go onto a boat and you help a guy fight a big white whale. Ah. I what? was not, I, no, this is not inspired by Herman Melville's classic novel. Moby Dick, yes. Yeah, it's like... Okay, okay. I'm I'm trying I'm trying not to I'm trying not to to bitch at the creator uh, of New Vegas Bounties. Uh, but like it's okay to be inspired by something and it's okay to make a character that is wholesale inspired by this other character, but at least give him a different name. Like I'm not going to I'm not going to make a first person shooter. I'm not going to make a first person shooter or a mod of this game where you have to escape a uh, a like science facility that's being overrun by aliens and you play his main character Gordon Freeman. <laughs> yeah, but if you were running it, alongside it, somebody named Gordon Freeman, I'd go, oh, that's a fun reference. I get that reference. If you had, like, someone, if you had it in, like, a note, or you had, like, a crowbar in there, then, yeah, I get it. Uh, whatever. I'm harping on it too much. It's a Fallout New Vegas mod. It doesn't matter. It's fine. It's just kind of like, all right, I get it. I get it. I see what you're doing. I think the biggest criticism of the Some Guy series was just the way that Marco was heavy-handed. I think a lot of people would be able to overlook things like references and things that may have been a little too referential. Yeah, and it's like, it's not the... I can't rip on it too much because he's not wholesale ripping off the story of Blood Meridian. But he is straight... There's another character in Blood Meridian who is the judge. Yeah. There you go. Okay, yeah. Well, it's... I, that's like yeah, that's the only that's the only real criticism. Well, those are the only two real criticisms I had about that, and the one about Blood Meridian I didn't know because I hadn't read Blood Meridian at the time, which is weird that I hadn't read Blood Meridian because I like Cormac McCarthy's writing. I had read uh, No Country for Old Men already, and I really liked that one. I had read The Road, which is I don't want to say I like it. I do like it. I, I like to refer to the book The Road as one of the best books that I would never recommend to anyone. Because that book is hard. Ah, uh, you mentioned that, yeah. That book is, like, dark and crushing. Mm. And I, re I do really like that book, but it's fucked. Yeah. I feel like there are a lot of mods out there that have teams. People that are dedicated to being writers or being programmers. But y you gotta give props to some guy, 2000, for basically doing eight or nine different mods that he kind of coded and programmed and wrote basically by himself. He got yeah, I'm not actors. saying, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's bad at all. I just have criticisms about it. Yeah. And they're totally fair. Yeah. That's one of the reasons that I always feel kind of bad, like talking shit on people's mods. It's not like it's a video game or a movie that was done, done by like a team, or even if it was done by a team of people, it's not like it's a video game or a movie. I didn't pay anything for this. They did this for free. It's tantamount to reading somebody else's fan fiction and then being like, this is shit and you're stupid. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, you can say that this is shit and you're stupid, but nobody was forcing you to read it. Yeah. It's like going to a craft fair and looking at all the things that people made that they actually spent time on and then just being like, this is shit and you're a moron for making it. They make better stuff in bulk in China. So on one hand, I feel bad about that. But on the other hand, you get mods where it's like... The NCR campaign of the Frontier. Yeah. Where it's just egregious. Yeah. I really do enjoy mods because, yeah, sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad. But they're usually interesting because uh, you're seeing the world through somebody else's eyes. It's not going to be designed by committee. It's not going to be this boiled down to its basic elements. It's not going to be a survival crafting hack job. It's going to be something that somebody wanted to put out there. They had a passion for it. You're not paying a dollar every time you need to reload the firearm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no microtransactions, yeah. 
I, I know I've said before, like, oh, it takes itself too seriously. And it's okay to take yourself seriously. It's okay to take your work seriously. But just like, you gotta know, you gotta know when you're, when you're getting close to the line of like, I don't want to say heavy handedness, but yeah, I guess that works. Speaking of heavy handedness, that uh, New Vegas Bounties 3 came out around the same time, you know, late 2010s, kind of when, uh, what you call it, uh, the line. Was it the line? Oh, Spec Ops? Yeah, Spec Ops the line. The big subversion. And everyone was kind of captivated by it. It wouldn't surprise me to learn that that was kind of referencing that, was inspired by that. Yeah, I guess. A yeah. lot of people were really enthralled with that and may have wanted to make something similar to that. But yeah, it's difficult to uh, capture that essence. Spec Ops the line is one of the only ways that I've seen I've seen a game do a thing of what you did is bad, and they do it like well. Yeah, it's so simple, but it does Wait, so much. I just realized that my AP drains when I jump. Oh yeah, <laughs> does that happen in the base game? I don't think so. No, it may have been one of the very, very many, very many changes that I checked off the list on the Stewie Tweaks mod. Ah. Have you ever seen the Stewie Tweaks mod? I haven't seen that. Now look at all these different things that Stewie Tweaks allows you to customize. These are all all these options added by Stewie Tweaks. Good lord. You can customize Fallout New Vegas however you please now. And I have like 40 or 50 options turned on and it just a lot of quality of life changes. It feels so much better to have this mod. I wouldn't want to play New Vegas without this mod. It's a lot. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of tweaks here. Yeah, a lot of really good quality of life stuff. The amount of the amount of mods that people have made for this game is just absolutely insane. You want to know what's really staggering? Uh, apparently, Starfield has a huge amount of mods. Like the it's like the number three most modded game on the Nexus, and, and it's only been out for like less than a year. That's got that seems really strange to me, considering that like all of the modder, the, all of the like big modders that I had heard of were basically just like, yeah, I'm not modding anything for Starfield. It I heard sucks. one or two people say that, and then it got really blown out of proportion. So people take that narrative and they run with it, and then it's kind of like Fallout 76 in the sense that there's a dedicated community, and they have a passion for it, and they stick with it, and that's all they play. Mm. I mean, I'm basically I'm done playing it. Fair enough. I got, the, I got the enjoyment I wanted out of it, and it would have been nice to get more, but what are you going to do? I mean, they went all in on procedurally generated planets, and it's boring. Yeah. And also the story is boring. The because, systems are in place, though. Because Bethesda's head writer sucks. <laughs> yeah. The systems are in place, so it wouldn't surprise me if the modding community does turn that procedural generation into something interesting many years later down the line. Maybe, but, like, I'm not holding my breath. At the moment, I'm not interested in it, but I'm leaving the door open. Eh. Eh. I'm not leaving the door open. It knows where the key is. You've, you've already got the game in your inventory. It can, it can, it can go find the fucking key and <laughs> maybe come in if it, you know, can make some actually fun gameplay. Yeah, exactly. See? You did leave the door open if it's got some fun gameplay. I didn't leave the door open, though. It's closed and uh. locked. It just has to go find the key. <laughs> and the key is have good gameplay. Starfield has to crawl into the window. Yeah. Gotta be out there holding the boombox. Take me back! No, Starfield, you're not good. Yeah, <laughs> you're not fun. I think uh, Fallout 4 London comes out in April. I would like to... It, as long as it's good, I would like to play through the, the campaign. If we start... Basically, the, my, my stipulation for playing through Fallout London is... If we get to a certain point in the campaign and it's just like... It's like playing the NCR campaign. Uh-huh. I, I reserve the right to be like, yeah, I'm done with this. Absolutely. You're well within your right. I won't hold it against you. Because, like, I wish we had stopped playing the NCR campaign. Yeah. I, I straight up wish that once we got to space, I had been like, yeah, I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. Let's do one of the other campaigns. Yeah. Because that sucked. It was miserable. And it honestly, to be completely honest, has kind of tainted my entire opinion of Fallout New Vegas. Ouch. Or, man. well, not, not, I'm sorry, not Fallout New Vegas. It's a tainted my entire opinion of the Fallout New Vegas modding community. Yeah, it's made it more difficult to enjoy mods. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to avoid putting you in situations like that. But to be fair, you have said that despite your negative interactions with that NCR campaign, you still are interested in playing the Crusaders. We could perhaps. do, yeah, maybe we can do the Crusaders quest at some point in the future. I'm not like, I'm not like, oh my god, we have to do it. But I'm also not opposed to maybe doing that if we don't have anything to do in Fallout at some point. Well, there are so many mods out there, we'll never run out. But it would be a good 10, 12 episodes, I'm sure. Yeah. It'd it be just, a fun little thing to do. Yeah. It's just like, why isn't... 
<laughs> the NCR quest line is bad. We don't have to it's so focus bad. on it. Why isn't going to space part of the the, the fucking the, the 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 Crusaders who are basically like the Brotherhood of Steel? Why isn't it part of that? Uh, why isn't it part? Why isn't there a whole enclave thing that you do instead of it being part of the NCR quest line? The simple explanation is that the mod author for the NCR campaign wanted to have all this stuff and everyone else who was making the other quest lines decided no that's dumb we're gonna try and minimize yeah. that as much as possible there's just a lot of stuff about that that i don't particularly like and you know to be completely honest i'm gonna be i'm i'm more interested in playing fallout london specifically because the amount of stuff from the bethesda fallout games will hopefully be kept to a minimum because I've said that multiple times, that what I want from a Fallout game, I am sick of seeing the Brotherhood of Steel. I'm sick of vault Tech. I'm sick of fucking Raiders. I'm sick of the NCR. I don't want to see that shit anymore. Mm -hmm. Just like, why, why, I'm playing Fallout 4, which is in Boston. Mm -hmm. Why is the Brotherhood of Steel in Boston? Yeah. And I know that that was technically established in Fallout 3 that the Brotherhood of Steel is there. But again, why are they on the East Coast? The Brotherhood of Steel is a West Coast organization. Yep, should have just come up with a new faction, but... Make a new one. Yeah. I really should play through Fallout 1 and 2. Um, I, know they're, I know they're very difficult. I don't think you have to. As someone who has forced themselves to play the first two games, Fallout 1 and Fallout 2, I didn't terribly like it i have no desire to go back to it and i honestly don't think you'll get any enjoyment out of it i am looking forward to i know there are some modders out there who are trying to recreate the story in these newer engines fallout 4's engines for example and i'd love to be able to experience that but until that day happens yeah i wouldn't recommend you check out fallout 1 and fallout 2 you could probably spend your time better this is a, this is the thing that i don't understand is that bethesda instead of working on starfield for over 10 years like they said they did instead of working on starfield they literally could have just remade fallout new vegas in the fallout 4 engine mm. and they would have made ass loads of money i i know a lot of people say they want fallout new vegas in fallout 4's engine and i know there are modding projects out there trying to make that happen and i i don't want to speak ill of them but i feel like a lot of people have this version of Fallout New Vegas in their mind that they love, and they want their version of Fallout New Vegas in Fallout 4, but it's their version. I guess... I'm just saying that even the original Fallout... Just base Fallout New Vegas. The thing is, though, would you want to have Fallout New Vegas as it was released? Yeah, excluding the, the bugs and everything, you know, make it more stable. But would you want vanilla base game... Yes. Fallout New Vegas ported, even knowing that it's not the fully realized version. There was so much that was cut out of it. So much that it, it, it's so inferior to what it could have been. And it was it was good, and everyone likes it, and everyone remembers it fondly. But how, how much... Yeah, you, just make it exactly as it was released. Because that's the thing that everyone liked. Well, take it like this. How about Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes? Uh-huh. Yeah. That was... What take, about it? You took... Metal Gear Solid 1, and you put it into a newer engine. Yeah. Yeah. And that it was fun. Yeah, it's fun. But now that you have all these new technologies, uh, it made the Revolver Ocelot battle incredibly easy. Just trivialized the entire fight. When was the last time you played Metal Gear Solid? Not Twin Snakes, Metal Gear Solid. The original one? Yeah. I have, I've not played either version in a long time. I have. I played the original one when it came out. Uh-huh. When they re-released it re recently, I played it again. It is fucking difficult. The original version? Yeah. Yes, I agree. The original version just, of the PlayStation I'm, I'm 1 is very, very difficult. Twin Snakes makes it easier to play now. Absolutely. But I don't think New Vegas is difficult to play in the same regard. Have I played it right now? I, I think that they could have just remade New Vegas in the Fallout 4 engine. And I don't understand why... Well, no, I understand why they don't because they hate that people like it. Because Todd Howard hates that people <laughs> like Fallout New Vegas because he didn't make it. It does feel like that. I don't know if that's an accurate no, thing to I, say. It I feels swear like to it. God, that is that has got to be true. That he just doesn't like Fallout New Vegas because he didn't make it. I don't know if that's the case or not, but it does feel like there's some kind of resentment. Like, wh why are you shying away from all the things Fallout New Vegas does so well? I feel like after Starfield has come out, a lot of people are starting to see through Todd's bullshit. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay. Starfield is just an absolutely mid game. Yeah. It is like a, a Starfield is a five out of 10. I'd still rather play Starfield than Fallout 76. I don't know because the, the thing that I liked about Bethesda games was the environmental storytelling that they did. 
Hmm. That was the thing I liked about the Bethesda Fallout games was exploring an area and seeing these like handcrafted environments that people had made and people had spent a lot of time on and setting these things up so that you'd walk into a room and be like, oh, this is what happened in this room. I like that. And there's none of that in Starfield. The, well, no, let me take that back. That does happen in Starfield in like a building. And then they just plop that building all over the map. I so you go into an area and it's like, oh, it's just another spacer compound that's exactly like the last seven spacer compounds I found. Yeah. There's the exact same notes that I found in a previous spacer compound. I wouldn't want to do any of the procedurally generated exploration. I would probably stick to the main quest line and the faction quest lines. But I'd still enjoy that more than Fallout 76. I have tried so hard to play Fallout 76 so many times. I want to play it. But I can't get over it. I can't get over how bad it is in so many ways. Sorry, I didn't mean to turn this into a me ragging on Fallout 76 thing. I don't know. I, ha I guess I just haven't tried to play Fallout 76 enough. And not, not that I'm going to. Yeah. I probably won't. Oh, the quest design in Fallout 76. Like, that's the biggest thing for me. The biggest thing for you in games is writing. But the biggest thing for me in quest is, is, is quest design. Uh -huh. And I went back to Fallout 76 and I tried to recruit that astronaut character. Yes, everyone knows about her. And she gave me, no joke, eight quests in a row that were just fetch quests she's she's telling me to go to various locations in the world to get things for her even though she just crash landed on the planet and doesn't know where everything is yeah and this is pretty much what's in starfield though it's like starfield is just like fetch quests go here deliver this thing to this dude go here pick up this thing i know come I... back here and then it's like there's the whole uh, spoilers for starfield if you care there's a whole plot line of the terror morphs. Oh my god, where are these terror morphs coming from? Terror morphs show up on any planet where humans are, but they only show up 75 years after humans have been there, and we don't know what's causing it. Gee, I wonder if it's these things called heat leeches, which also go wherever humans are, and have the same fucking mouth as a terror morph. Jeez. You're telling me that nobody at any point in this 200 year history, mm. nobody went, huh? The mouth of that heat leech looks kind of like the mouth of a terror morph. I wonder if I should compare the DNA of those two. Yeah. Nobody ever did that. <laughs> Not once. The, the writing has never been so super great. But did you did you see that there was a there was a uh, a Reddit thread? So do with that information what you will. But there was a Reddit thread talking about the head writer uh, at Bethesda, mm. whose name escapes me at the moment. But basically, he was responsible for writing the Dark Brotherhood quest line in... Skyrim? No, the Oblivion? one before Skyrim. Oblivion. He was responsible for writing the Dark Brotherhood quest line in Oblivion. And then he just wholesale copied that exact same thing and put it into Skyrim. Oh. It's the exact same quest line as far as, as what this person is arguing. I never played Oblivion. I've barely played Skyrim. So I don't fully know yeah, on that. It'll still and be I, a surprise for you. I should do more research before I look into it. But he was also basically the one responsible for writing, uh, like, almost all of Fallout 4's story. So it's just why there's so many dead ends to the story and so many missteps and all this other stuff. And it's, it's basically just like, I hope they fucking fire this dude. <laughs> maybe not fire, but maybe demote him or give, give him some else, someone get else some to help other, him. Get some other writers. Yeah. Some it's, fresh blood or something. I don't know. Yeah, since writing is a big part of you, it, it's very frustrating when you encounter bad writing. And it's, very it's, it's supposed to be a professional It's very product. frustrating when you're playing Fallout 4 and it's like, why are there super mutants here? And then it's revealed, oh, it's because the Institute made, was screwing around with the FEV and they made super mutants. Great, why are they still making super mutants? Because the Institute was screwing around with FEV and they made super mutants. And they're like, you go into the Institute and they say, well, we got to make sure we have the Synth Retention Bureau because the Synths can't keep escaping. They're very expensive to make. And it's like, expensive how? Where's What kind of, are you talking about resource expensive or are you talking about money expensive? Because if you're talking about money expensive, the fuck are you talking about? If you're talking about resource expensive, why the fuck do I go in the basement and they're pumping out a new synth every 30 seconds? Yeah. I am not joking. Go into the basement of the Institute, watch the fucking thing where they're making synths down there like it's fucking Westworld, <laughs> and there's, there is a synth coming out every 30 seconds. If it's resource intensive, how are they doing that? Yeah. We're gonna build a nuclear reactor so the Institute will never have to worry about power again. What the fuck have you been getting power from? <laughs> Where have you been getting power from it until now? You've just been going around collecting all the fucking fusion cells that I used to power my pants? Is that where your power's been coming from? <laughs> again, the writing is the biggest thing for you, so writing will set you off. I do and so again, I, to, 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 to touch on the fucking main plot of Fallout 4, I don't give a shit about my character's son. Yeah. I do not fucking care. Nope. 
Not in the slightest. Do you know why I like Fallout New Vegas so much? No kid. Because I'm the fucking mailman. Yep. I am a nobody. Mm -hmm. I am an absolute fucking zero that I can put whatever the fuck I want onto that character. If I want to be an absolute sociopath and play as a fucking le do a legion run of the game, I can do that. If I want to be Mr. Goody Two Shoes and never fucking gamble and never sleep with a prostitute and only make the best decisions ever because I'm Mr. America and I believe in the NCR, I can play through the game that way. You can play through New Vegas without killing anyone. A complete pacifist run is possible. Fallout 4, you boot up Fallout 4 and you're like, I'm gonna play as a female character this time who was a who was a spy and she she met uh she met Nate because she was uh she was at a base at, at, during operation or during Anchorage where they, she was transferring from China back to the United that was like the, the transfer point <laughs> and I'm gonna do like all and it's just no you're a lawyer yeah you're a lawyer you're a lawyer how am I good how am I good with guns then how does that make any the, the only there's no role playing in that game there's very limited very very limited and Starfield as well. It's somewhat limited in the sense that, yeah, you, you can, can do come up with your own backstory, but guess what? You're still going through the same motions. You're still going to be the chosen one. That's kind of the problem I have with Skyrim too. Is that every single every single thing you go to in Skyrim, like you go to the you go to the the, the mage's college, and after like two hours of gameplay, it's like, congratulations, you're the new archmage of the College of Winterhold, and then you go to. I don't know. Uh, Dark Brotherhood, Thieves Guild. You go to the Dark Brotherhood. You're the new, you're the listener for the Dark Brotherhood. And then you go to the fucking Thieves Guild. And it's like, you're the new, you're the, the, the Nightingale, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, I have not played enough of it to know. It's just like every, and it's the same thing in Fallout 4. Every faction you go to, you're the new leader. And it's like, you're not actually the leader of the railroad, but you're the fucking leader of the railroad. You're still going and getting their mail. Yeah. Getting coffee for them. Mm -hmm. That's why I do actually appreciate... I hate the Brotherhood of Steel in Fallout 4. I don't like them. But I appreciate that when you join the Brotherhood of Steel, you're not the fucking leader. They just make you a soldier, and that's as far as you get. Which is a lot better. Yeah, I like that. I actually don't think that's terrible. I think that's what they should have done. I don't like the fact that the Brotherhood of Steel is there. And I don't like that they brought their flagship, which is a fucking blimp that has 50 <laughs> people on it. Yeah. Wow, what a flagship. <laughs> Well, there's a difference between Starfield, which uh, has bad writing, and Fallout 4, which has bad writing. We are playing one of them, and we're not playing the other one right now. Yeah. And I think the biggest difference comes down to gameplay. It's a lot more fun to play Fallout 4 than it is to play Starfield. Fallout 4 is more fun. I, I can tell you the w one reason, one reason off the top of my head why Fallout 4 is more fun than Starfield. If you want to go somewhere in Fallout 4, you open your map, you fast travel there. Or, you fucking walk there. Yeah. There you go. Easy. If I'm in Sanctuary and I want to go to Vault 81, I fast travel to Vault 81. Or, I walk to Vault 81 and I go through one or two loading screens yeah. to get there. You want to go to a different planet and start, you're on fucking Jemison in Starfield and you want to go to a different planet. So you got to leave the room you're in, go through a loading screen. Walk to your ship, go through a loading screen to get on the ship. Get on the ship, sit down, go through a loading screen. Open the map, which is another loading screen. Take off, which is another loading screen. Get into space. Find where you're going in space. Open another loading screen. Go to the fucking planet. Loading screen. Land on the planet. Loading screen. <laughs> Just like, the main reason my house in this game isn't that fucking tower over there. In New Vegas, yeah. Because in order to get into the, the presidential suite and the Lucky 38, you have to go through... Loading screen to get into Freeside. Loading screen to get onto the strip. Loading screen to get into the tower. Loading screen to go up the elevator. That's four loading screens just to go to my house. Yep, and there are mods that add a fast travel point to the, the room inside the tower. But if you don't have that, that's that's a lot of loading screens. Yeah, so it's like, I'm not going to... Why would I do that in Starfield? Where I go through loading screen, loading screen, loading screen, loading screen, loading screen. Just to fucking go to a different planet. It's the same thing in... I'm so sick of... In Starfield, I, I don't play it anymore. But I'm sick of going to the den in Starfield. Because that's the only place that they don't do a scan of your stuff to sell contraband. Mm. And because it's the only place where they don't do a scan of your ship, th they never have any money because you just, you're constantly going back there to sell all your contraband. I see. And then, like, you can't get shielded cargo spots until you do a specific quest line, which, I don't know. I, th I feel like if you're going to have a thing, or if you're going to have a mechanic where the local police entity will scan your ship to see, if you to see if you have contraband, then you need to have a perk for that character that they can unlock that is the smuggler perk, where you have shielded cargo that reduces your percentage of being caught. 
But because they hit it specifically behind the um, Crimson Fleet quest line, it's just like, this sucks. Your opinion on Starfield has really, really soured, which is kind of crazy considering how much you enjoyed it when you first started playing. I Yeah. It dropped off really hard for you, didn't it? It did. Can you, can you pinpoint exactly when it started or some points where it really be, really turned down? I don't know specifically when it started. Even early, I have 200 hours in that game. I played a lot of it. Even early on, you were down on the crafting, but... Yeah, I don't like the crafting. I don't like the base building. That's incredibly boring to me. Did you finish the four faction quest lines? No, I, I never even finished the game. Did, did you finish any of the four faction I finished quest Ryujin lines? quest line. Oh, okay. Uh, I was working on the one about the, the like the terror morphs. Yeah, I just I just I just got really I just got really bored. Like it was just one day I went to play it and I was just like I don't want to fucking play this today. I'll yeah. play something else. And then I played something else and I was like, oh my god, good writing. And then I instantly was just like out of it. Yep. Yeah, I, I guess I can't really pinpoint exactly when I was just like I don't I don't like this anymore, but. No, I don't really like it. I need to, that actually reminds me, I need to take that video off of my channel about me recommending Starfield. Because, like, my opinion on it has changed that much. Don't get it. It's boring. I got my enjoyment out of it while I was playing it. And like I said, I have 200 hours in the game. So if you're going on a dollar per hour value, yeah, it's worth it. But it drops off fast. Yeah, in terms of enjoyment per value, maybe not as much. It drops off real fast. I feel, I feel like that game is actually fun. It's fun to explore. And when you first start playing it, you're like, wow, this is, this is cool. This looks neat. And it, like, you're having fun building ships and uh, like playing around with the guns that are in the game. But then it's just, man, it drops off so fast. Mm -hmm. But we've already talked about that at length, I suppose. Yeah. I'll have to look and see like what mods there are for Starfield. But like, I'm not really interested in playing it. No, me neither just kind of doesn't really, it doesn't particularly interest me. There may very well be a resurgence sometime in the future, but at the current time, no, not really interested. Yeah. Tell you what, I picked up a game on Steam for $3 called Super Kiwi 64, and I played it for less than an hour mm -hmm. because it takes less than an hour to beat it. But I had more enjoyment with that small game in 43 minutes than I have other big budget $60, 70 $80 titles. I had more enjoyment with Vampire Mansion. Yeah. That game cost like six bucks. I had more enjoyment playing that game than I did a lot of other like big games. Yeah, a lot of games demand a huge time investment and it's really difficult to devote that amount of my life to them. Especially if a lot of them are cookie cutter and forgettable. Yeah, I really enjoyed playing the demo of Pacific Drive. Like that was that was a lot of fun, and that's a fucking survival crafting. Well, I, it, it's not a racing game, which is I, a surprise no, it's to not. Me. It's not. It's a crafting game. It's not a survival game. Because that you're not like trying to make food and stuff like that. You're not building a building a house. You're yeah. just fixing your car. I was really surprised to tune into your stream and see you having a good good time with that. Very surprising to see that it wasn't a driving game, but instead a survival crafting game, which you notoriously do not like. Yeah, but there's a lot of driving in that game, though. Oh, so it is kind of a driving sim. Yeah, it's it, the game is the game is based entirely around the car is the thing that will help you survive. So you have to get that. You have to keep the car working. I see. Yeah. To, it, it, it's a lot like the game uh, Jalopy or kind of My Summer Car. It's a lot like those games where you're just fixing this thing. Right. But then you're also crafting stuff, which is... I don't know. I don't, I don't like survival crafting games when the game is crafting. When the game is just crafting. That's all the game is. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like the game uh, Ark. Because that game is just crafting. I see. There's Yeah, there's dinosaurs in it. But it's just, you're, all you're doing in that game is go here, get more resources, go here, get more resources, go here, get more resources, go here, get more resources. So that you can knock this dinosaur unconscious and maybe tame them. Except that you're playing on a public server, so someone's going to show up and kill the dinosaur you're trying to tame. <laughs> and then lock you into a cage and just leave you in there. And then keep forcing you, keep knocking you unconscious and forcing you to eat food so that you can't die. But it means that you can't play anymore. Sounds, I've never played Ark, but you make it sound so fun. It's, it's not. Really, the, from the, the limited time that I have, and I, I, again, I don't remember how many hours I have in that game, but probably close to like 100 hours. The time I have in that game, it, I basically spent the majority of it playing on a private server, because if you play on public servers, you just get griefed constantly. Mm -hmm. 
You have to spend hours and hours and hours hiding from other people and trying to build a base that's made out of more durable materials. But then the dude just shows up in a giant, in like a fucking Giga T-Rex and he just noms your base into non-existence. <laughs> and now you've lost everything that you spent the entire time crafting for. When I was playing, when I was playing Ark, there was uh, one of the public servers that, that I was on for the brief period of time that I was playing. Um, I started setting up like a little tiny base in the middle of nowhere. I said I started setting up like a fucking shack. It was a Ted Kaczynski shack uh, <laughs> next to a river, right. and I had a dodo to my name. <laughs> one dodo. One dodo. And my my goal my goal was I want to have a terror bird, and I want to ride around on the terror bird because I like terror birds and I think they're fun. That yeah. was my goal. I started setting up this little tiny shack on the side of a river, and like. Five minutes after I set up the shack, dude shows up on a T-Rex and is like, hey, you can't be in this, like some fucking 14 year old. Hey, you can't be in this area. This belongs to this clan. You're not supposed to be here. Mm. What clan are you a part of? And I'm just like, I'm not a part of any clan, dude. I'm just playing the game. Well, you can't be here. You have to move. I'm going to come back in 10 minutes. And if you haven't moved, then I'm going to eat your base. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Eat your base. <laughs> and it's like, I can't fucking do anything. It's just like, I'm a 35-year-old fucking combat veteran who's getting talked down to a, to a 14-year-old. Yeah. It's frustrating. It's incredibly frustrating. Anyway, the server that I was a part of, this fucking dude that had been a massive troll and was pissing people off, one of the other big clans in this server captured this guy and put him into a cage. <laughs> All right. And because what you can do in that game is your character will poop occasionally. Mm -hmm. If you're eating, because it's a survival crafting game, you have to eat food and you have to poop and urinate okay you can eat the poop that you make because it goes into your inventory ah corophagia yeah you can eat that and then that will make you sick and you'll die so that's the way that you unalive yourself in the game if you have to if you if you have no way to unalive yourself that's the way you do it i'd see so what they would do because this guy had been such a troll what they did is they put him into this cage they knocked him unconscious so when, you're, when your character is unconscious, you, it's like your eyes are opening and closing a little bit. Uh -huh. So you can kind of see what's going on and you can hear other people talking. Mm. But you can't do anything. You can't move. You can't... The only thing you can do is talk back to them and, and sit there. Yeah. So they put him in this cage. They knocked him unconscious. And then they kept force feeding him food and taking the poop out of his inventory so he couldn't kill himself. <laughs> Which meant that they had like dedicated two people sitting there monitoring this dude. He's on poop guard. <laughs> And it's just like, wow, what a fucking fun game. Yeah. I could be playing Forza Horizon and driving a car real fucking fast. Or I could be playing Metal Gear Solid. I could be playing literally anything else. But what I'm doing is sitting here and watching a guy to make sure he doesn't eat his own poop. <laughs> Thrilling fucking <laughs> gameplay. So that's why when people are like, do you like survival crafting games? Like, no, I fucking hate survival crafting no, games. Because they're boring as shit. <laughs> Sometimes they are done well, like with Pacific Drive, or uh, my, my go-to has always been the Long Dark. Yeah, but... that's that's another, that is that is more of a survival game than a crafting game, yeah. I would argue. Yeah, absolutely. And that game is fun. I enjoy playing that. You know, what I, you know what I think it is? I think it's that most survival crafting games are multiplayer, and I fucking hate playing multiplayer games. Ah, uh, fair. I don't want to play games with other people. Don't make me play games with other people. Don't make me do that. Hell is other people. Don't make me play games with other people. That was like when I played Destiny 2, I, I would do raids on a regular... I would do raids or I would do strike missions on a regular basis. Mm. And I liked doing strike missions, but I hated playing them with other people. Mm. I just want... Because strike missions are with three people. So at least it's not that bad. You only get two other people. And if one of the... If one or even two of the other people are just absolute morons, you can generally still get through the strike mission. Yeah. And then, and then you know, sometimes people would join and they'd be like, Hey, do you have a microphone? And because I, I would never play with a microphone... I just wouldn't say anything or I would type no into the chat. And then a lot of the time they would leave because like, well, they, they just have to talk to other people. Yeah. I don't know. How are we supposed to organize like a good strike? It's, it's, it's a like 10 minute strike mission. It's not that complicated. I see. Yeah. I always got annoyed. Some games have fun cooperative aspects. I have nothing but fond memories of the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer from back in the day, which is surprisingly, surprisingly still going. That's kind of weird that it's like still going though. Yeah. People are still having fun with Team Fortress 2, despite all of its drawbacks. It's, it's crazy the kind of games that have longevity. You try it again. It's kind of like Overwatch. I yeah. I, it's class based. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I played Overwatch for many years. I that was my kind of go to game for many years, and I'm glad I'm not playing it anymore for many reasons. Mainly because that game made me mad. 
I don't like the person Overwatch makes me become. Nah, you should just play more Overwatch. Just no. be angry all the time. It's well, great. Nah, I don't want to be angry, and I don't want to pay $20 for a skin for a character I'm never going to use. $20 for a fucking battle pass. You got to spend $20 every month to get the battle pass, but none of the skins are in the battle pass, so you got to pay separately for those. So fucking stupid. Nickel and dime you to death. Uh, I guess uh, I don't have any. It's just, just been ranting. Yeah, we've just been ranting for an hour. I don't know if any of it's even useful, but eh. whatever. Whatever. Great.